So I'm going to talk about the uh, a detailed project and the, the combined technology. This was done in Professor Sam Cherry's lab. Professor Sam Cherry is the acting chair of the Department of Biomedic Biomedical Engineering and also the director of the CMGI. So I will go uh, some basic of the the PET and MR, then talking about the challenges and approach for the combined PET MR scanner. So, and then talk about the PET insert developed in our lab for the small animal image. So, for the in vivo biomedical imaging, uh, we have uh, many methods to do this. Basically, for, uh, for the anatomical image, we could do the X ray CTs, MR. Ultrasound, but for the molecular image, we used the optical image or the PET spect. So for the MR, that the basically the there's a magnet, and the grid in the IF. The magnet produced the high, very very strong magnetic field, and the grid in the switch and the select which side to image. So the IF the trans Transceive and transceive the F signal to generate the final image. Uh, PET is the uh, in vivo, the non inverse molecular image method uh, that uh, works in a different way. Can you show the movie? Uh, we have the patient that we are inject with the uh, radioactive material that uh, uh, will be com uh, target combined with the target molecular. Then we'll go to the blood vessel, go to the target position. But the radioactive uh, isotope will emit the gamma rays, uh, actually emit the positron, then the positron travel the, uh, inside the tissue and uh, finally align with the electron, emit two gamma rays. So we detect these gamma rays, so we can in image the, acquire the distribution of the, of the biomarker in the, inside of the body. So we have these two images. Im image modalities, so we can combine them together to uh, to get a better uh, image. We have both the anatomical information and the functional image, but that's also uh, like the but many people knows the PET CT. We can the PET MRI is something like the PET CT. We can provide the perfect near perfect registration of these two images. So we have the anatomical information and also the functional image. So um, compared, compared with the PET CT, the PET MR have the some advantages. There's no extra uh, radiation dose and uh, we have, com it can be combined with the MR because the MR have some, so many uh, advanced technologies can be used. There are also some disadvantages that uh, we cannot uh, uh, apply the attenuation correction easily like the CT images. And uh, that would be more challenges and uh, more expensive. So the, basically the challenge for the PET MRI is the interference. That's a major issue. And also there are some general challenges, the space and uh, some cost and other things. There are two methods to combine the PET MR. There would be a separate PET scanner and a MR scanner. There will also be an integrated PET MR scanner. Uh, we developed a MR compatible PET system that's an integrated PET system. The PET will sit inside the, the MR scanner. So there are also other groups uh, uh, developed some different technologies to combine the PET-MR. 
Uh, this first one I was done by Professor Cherry uh, more than 10 years ago with the optical fiber bundle of the optical fiber bundle here. Then we other groups have developed the split magnet method and also that the field cycle MR can be used uh, for the combined PET MR. In our lab, we developed uh, with a different approach. We used the uh, PSAPD, which is not sensitive to the magnetic field. We used the cylinder with short length of uh, fiber bundle, so we can place the whole detector inside the magnetic field. So this is the whole insert, this is the half opened here. You can see the detectors. We have the cylinder detectors here with the optical fiber bundle to go to the photo detector and the electronics. So the whole insert will be placed inside the magnet. So there would be some interference here. We test this combined scanner that no major interference was found. But there, there was small interference. The, on the, on the PET effect, that the MR, the strong gradient switching will generate some artifacts on the signals. So the finally we got some count lost in on the PET, so it decreased the sensitivity. For the MR, we found a very small signal noise ratio decrease. But we have, we can see the image is basically just a difference, it's just noise there. So there's no major interference. Uh, this is the uh, in vivo animal study. This is the mouse imaged with the carbon 64. The first one shows the MR image at a different time. The second one shows the patch image. So the first one shows the anatomic image. Maybe if you look carefully, we can, you can find the tumor position. But in the patch, we can easily find the tumor position. And in the combined uh, image, we can easily identify the tumor. Also, we can use this scanner to combine with other MR technologies, such as the uh, MRS. We can, this is done with the mouse brain, so we can show the, this peaks clearly. Also, we have done some measurement of the positive range. Actually, uh, I'm going to skip this one, but uh, this is the initial reason why people will want PET MR, but now it's not important anymore. So um, we have dealt the PET MR for the small animal, basically the mouse image. Also, there are the companies, Siemens has developed the human PET MR, use the same uh, uh, not same, the similar approach put the PET insert inside the MR. So we can image the patient PET, and PET image and the MR image at the same time. So that's the possible applications uh, for the PET MR, but it's still under investigation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if, uh, Dr. Lowe and Dr. Matthews, if you have just a moment, we'll